All right, Mom. Hello, Robert. Um, I would say thank you for joining me today, uh-huh. but apparently your allegiances lie elsewhere. No, it's just that you can't welcome me to your podcast when it's our podcast. Well, it'd be like, no, it's like, oh, well, welcome home. Like you're like, oh, well, welcome to your home. <laughs> you know? No, I mean, it's like, hey, 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 Robert, it's good to see you again yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the counter. What? <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. Thank you, Robert. It's really nice to join you today on the podcast. Yes. Yeah. So um, last week you talked about dealing with different kinds of you mm-hmm. know, inner, or inner child and, and adult trauma kind of thing. And mm-hmm. I thought that was really good. So this week it'll be my turn to yes. share. And on this week, I'm going to be talking about, I originally talked about it last week as traveling by yourself, Correct. right? Or like doing more things by yourself. And as I was like reviewing it, I, it, it was too narrow of a topic, I mm-hmm. thought. And so I expanded more on just doing anything by yourself opposed to like traveling. Cause you know, not everybody has the feasible means to like travel. Okay. And you know, there's a lot more you can get out of it by just, you know, by, by not like having to like set sail across the world in 80 days kind of thing. So mine will be right. specifically doing things by yourself and why I think it's important for more people to do it. Oh, cool. So that like the benefits of it. Yeah. Not even, yeah. Not even so much the benefits of it, but yeah, I, I guess the benefits of it, okay. um, you know, because, um, <laughs> what <laughs> just Indy deciding to get no, her, now is there her a time? I don't afternoon think, snack. I don't think the microphones will pick that up to be honest. Oh, absolutely. You. I mean, maybe not these, but when I'm recording my podcast and she's like on the mm. other side of the front room chewing on her bone, you can hear it. So you agree that different microphones pick up different. There sounds. you go. Yes. Thank you. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, mine's going to be more about doing things by yourself. And the reason I chose this is mm-hmm. because I think it's very interesting in, in Western societies how needing to be like that, oh, I need somebody else or else I'll be perceived as being lonely or being alone or, or not, you know, like, like I'm going to stick out or people are going to like think weird of me. Like, you know, a lot of people don't, don't want to do things by themselves and they feel like they need like almost that crutch or else they'll get objective or not objective, but they'll get ridiculed or mm-hmm. maybe um, looked down upon for doing activities by themselves. And I think that's a narrative that I don't, think it is any like particular cause, but I think it's really interesting to see that like, Oh, I could never go to the restaurant by myself or I I could never go to a movie theater by myself Mm -hmm. kind of thing. And it's interesting to see that like, that's a, that's a rear, a brand's calling you. Do you want to pause it real quick? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's like a real fear of a lot of people is doing things by themselves. And so I thought it was, I thought today would be a cool little topic to talk about that Oh, cool. because I actually, I actually really do enjoy doing things by myself. But it wasn't until I had to start doing things by myself that I can like learn to enjoy it. Okay. So like, for example, like I travel a lot by myself and -hmm. and now I almost prefer it um, because it just kind of forces me to kind of think outside the box that, you know, I get to do exactly what I want to do. I don't have to worry about anybody else. I don't have to like, you know, if I fall into a problem or anything like that, I'm, you know, I'm the first point of contact. I'm the reason that like I, um, you get out of the situation or I make it worse. And it really is very um, freeing in terms of mm-hmm. gaining a lot of independence of traveling by yourself. So that's, that's why I chose the topic is because I think a lot of people tend to like not, I think they hold themselves back because they don't have anybody to do an activity with. Oh, absolutely. So like, and, I, and as I was researching this, the one, this one time we were hosting the grapevine tour, I, you know, generally it's a tour bus and you have anywhere between like two to like, sometimes it'd be like parties of eight, right? Mm-hmm. So generally it's like two, two to eight people would join the, the party, right? And I remember this one time, it was just somebody who just joined up. It was just one person. Yeah. And I was like, hey, like, are you waiting for somebody else? She goes, no, it's just me. Like, you know, it's just me. And, you know, this one person didn't know anybody on the bus, but towards the end of the day, I mean, she was best friends with everybody. And, and to think that she would, you know, be liberating enough to be like, yeah, I'll just take a, I'll take a tour by myself. Like, what does it matter? And she ended up making a lot of friends and, you know, became like the unofficial spokesperson of the bus. But, yeah. you know, just think if fear had held her back because, you know, she didn't have anybody to travel with or right. anything like that. So like, as I was doing, I was just, you know, as I was doing research topics, I kept thinking about like instances in which you know, being by yourself was more beneficial than it was hindering. Um, so I thought it was really cool. So, um, I found an article online and it's called the benefits of doing things by yourself by thrivingcenterofpsychology.com. Okay. 
And the article starts off by saying, it says, being alone and being lonely are two different things. When you're alone, no one else is physically around you. Feeling lonely is an emotional state. You could be in a, cl- excuse me, you can be in a crowd of people and still feel lonely. Mm-hmm. Loneliness is a stable, uh, is a state of lacking. It feels like something is missing. Page flip. It feels like something is missing. Being alone is spending time in solitude without feeling lonely. By shifting the narrative of being alone from something negative to an opportunity to reflect and grow, you can start to appreciate the importance of spending time alone. And I thought that was a really cool way to start the, um, it's a really cool way of like starting the article. Like, right. cause there is, there is a distinct difference between being lonely mm-hmm. and then being alone. I mean, you could be in a relationship and still feel uh, lonely. lonely, right? Oh, yeah. you, you could be in a group of, of, of like a crowd. You can be in a group of friends and still feel, you know, lonely, you know? And, and a lot of times I feel like that it's almost, it's, I mean, I would say almost every time it's worse, right? you know, if you just don't vibe with them. Right. I was just going to say really quick, it's like, it brings up to like the fact, like when I was married, Mm -hmm. I felt very lonely. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been single for a very long time and I don't feel lonely. Yeah. Well, you're comfortable with being alone, Mm -hmm. you know, like there's, like they say, there's a difference and there's a lot of instances in which I, you know, I, I really do value my alone time. You know, I like, reading. I like being solitude. Some days I'll just like to go and, you know, eat by myself or I just like to go and relax by myself. And it, it's very mentally recharging. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's just really nice to know that like, there's like that stigma of like, oh, well you can't do anything. Like you have to have somebody come with you. You need like a, a security blanket. And that's generally not the case in a lot of times. Well, why do you think that there is that stigma? I think it's just, I think it's the same reason. Like when you're like, let's just say you're in line at a bank or something like that. And if like, a lot of people like to kill time, they'll look through the phone or they'll try to text. And it's that, it's that projection of feeling important. Right. So it's like, you know, you have your phone out in the bank, you have your phone out online and you could be texting somebody and, and the, it would be perceived as being important. Like, Oh, excuse me. Like it could be like perceived like, Oh, well this person's got a bunch of people to text or this person's really busy like doing that. And I think it's that, that idleness that kind of drives people and lets their kind of brain run. Mm -hmm. You know, because like, if you think about it, like we know that when we're standing in queue or when you're doing something, like what's the first thing you instinctively like stick out your phone and you try to, you try to like make some sort of connection with, you know, people through Instagram or TikTok or messaging and things like that. And, um, it makes you feel, I don't know, I I don't want to say important, but it makes you feel like you're connected connected. or you're not really alone that you're actually with somebody. Exactly. Yeah. So you're not, you're not, even when you're standing in line, you're still texting somebody and you're still depending on another person. And Mm -hmm. I think. And I think the reason is, is because people are afraid of looking like they're lonely. All right? right. So I think it's that preconceived notion that like, oh, if I don't, if I'm not texting somebody, then I must be construed as being alone or, you know, not having anybody important to text. And then sometimes you just want to be in the moment. Right. You know, and I think that's, and I think that's how a lot of people are, are worried about how they're being perceived. And I think that affects them from starting anything. Right. Like they're, they're worried about how people are going to look at them if they go to the movie theaters by themselves or they, they do this or that, um, by themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's weird how you kind of like you live your life depending on how you think people perceive you. Okay. You know? And I think that's really a really interesting topic. And you know, for, for that part of topic, right. Being alone and being lonely are different. Um, and it's really interesting. And I wrote, um, It says what it means when you can't stand to be alone. And it says alone time isn't always easy. For some, it's tough to spend time alone. Distressing and negative thoughts and feelings can be overwhelming when you're alone. Sometimes that inner voice and critic become louder. The fear of loneliness can be related to a lack of self-confidence or worry of abandonment. Maybe you never learn to enjoy your own time. Like most things, you can still learn to enjoy your time. It's never too late to learn a new behavior or to adjust your mindset. And I think it all, I think it really does come down to all like a, a specific mindset. So now do you have any suggestions for people who out there who want to start doing things on the room? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's at the end of the article. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, you know, sorry, it's all right. It's fine. Um, but like there's a lot of instances in which like, okay, so like for an example, um, one, one of my favorite, one of my favorite stories to tell is when I went to Africa for the first time Mm -hmm. by myself, right? So it was an 18 hour flight to Qatar. And then it was another 10 hour flight from Qatar to South Africa. And then I had to go to a, um, another hour flight onto Hoodsprit. And so in between when I landed in South Africa, 
it, I had to go through customs and I had to do all this stuff and I navigate everything by myself. I've never been to this airport before. I had mm-hmm. no idea where anything is. If you've ever been to the Johannesburg airport, it is, it is a very confusing airport. It's not, um, it wasn't designed well to, to benefit travelers. You have to go up and down escalators. You have to go through halls and things. And there are people who w- don't work for the airport, but they'll usher you along for compensation. Mm-hmm. And you have to like navigate all these road mines. And if like, you know, when you're by yourself, you're in a, you're in a whole new area, you're in a whole new country, nothing is familiar. And you're really like on high alert. And because you're like on high alert and you're by yourself, you, you're like, you're, you're your own universe, right? right? You're your own decision maker. Everything you make, you're like, okay, I'm going to rationalize thinking this. And it, it really does make you grow as a person to overcome these challenges. And so I finally, finally get to the, to the airport. I finally get to the, my connecting flight and that the fly from an hour flight from Johannesburg to Hoodsprit. And when I land in Hoodsprit, it was an abandoned, not an abandoned, but it used to be an old, um, like military base. Mm-hmm. It was a bunker. And so there's a bunch of bunkers. There's Bort dogs like on the drive on the air, um, tarmac. And you know, Did you, you say warthog, warthogs, War- warthogs, yeah, okay. warthogs on the, on the tarmac. And you know, we land, there's only like four employees there in the entire airport and you land everyone kind of just, they kind of just like put your luggage near the side of the road and all these tour companies or all these reserve companies are coming, picking up guests and leaving. And I don't have any, nobody, you know, my yeah. buddy, um, at the time Calvin was supposed to pick me up mm-hmm. and it's like 45 minutes after the, you know, the planes landed for a while. It's been about 45 minutes. People are coming and going. And nobody, you know, Calvin, I texted Calvin, nothing. It's like two o'clock in the morning back home. And I texted Mike, nothing. And, you know, I'm at this airport and people are starting to leave. And uh, there's only two flights in Hoodsprit for the whole day. And this is the latest flight. So as soon as the plane landed, everyone got what they want. Everyone left. Mm -hmm. So I was by this airport by myself uh, in a country I've never been to with no cell reception or excuse me, with, with very poor cell reception, you know, it's four in the afternoon there, you know, the sun's setting. I have no idea who's supposed to pick me up. I have no idea who's coming to get me. And instead of being like, you like, you know, instead of like retreating into this hole, it really forces you to like grow. Like, okay, I'm networking. I'm getting on Facebook. I'm messaging people. Um, and then thankfully Christian, mm-hmm. um, Calvin eventually texted back and he texted Christian who ended up picking me up and everything was fine. But like, it really forces you to, to really grow as a person and overcome, um, like conflict resolution kind of things. You know, it really forces you to, to become a more independent person. And it's one of my favorite stories to tell, Yeah. but it could have also very well ended like very poorly. You know, I could have been, I could still be at that, at that airport, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But they'd be like, you know, like in Indiana Jones yeah. where they have like that skeleton in yeah. the corner. Yeah, that would have been me. With a warthog standing I next mean, because it gets cold there at night. Yeah. You know, and it's, you know, it, I was like, I was like a 15, 20 minute drive from the airport to where Christian was staying. Yeah. And so like, you know, having like that, that conflict and then overcoming that conflict is, it was very rewarding. Yeah. You know, it felt really good to be like, okay here is my situation. Here's my problem. And then this is how I'm overcoming it. Yeah. And it, opposed to like, if I was traveling with somebody else, I'd be like, Oh, well, Mike's here. He'll deal with it. So can I ask you a question yeah. really quick? So listening to that story, I yeah. think it's a really cool story yeah. and it is very much like for me, inspirational, like, mm. yeah, you know what? You can do conference resolution yeah. and everything. Now, do you think that there's people out there that would hear that story and be like, and that is well, why yeah, I, I mean, don't travel. Yeah. But like, myself. think about it. That's like, that's everybody's worst nightmare. Right. Yeah. And like, in the, it was definitely, especially cause it was my first time being in a, in a different continent in a different country. Mm-hmm. You know, it's definitely not how you want to start the first, I was only in the country for like two hours. Right. right. And I'm already lost at the airport, you know, thousands, like probably like, I don't know, like 20,000 miles away from everybody. And yeah, so it's super scary, but also too, at the same time, you're like, okay, well I'm in this predicament. How do I get myself out of it? And it's kind of like, um, it, it almost, it almost kind of opens up the perspective and the reality of like the rest of the world. Like, oh, well, if I can, if I can get through this hurdle, there's really nothing for else mm-hmm. to me to be afraid of, you know, like, oh, you know, this is my worst fear and I overcame it super easily. Then there's nothing else for, well, what else do I have to be afraid of? Yeah. You know? and, it, and it really makes you grow as a person. And it's terrifying. It's scary, but it's not enough to like hold you back kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, and after that, you're kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. Everything else is easy compared to that. See, I think the fear of what could happen is, yeah. holds people back, but we, you know, it, our perception of what could happen mm-hmm. is always seems to be worse than what really does happen. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it's interesting how we're kind of like our own worst enemies when it oh, comes yeah. to that kind of stuff. It, it, it makes sense because, 
you know, like our, our mind is designed to help us survive, right? The whole flight or flight instinct, Mm -hmm. you know, our, our brain is constantly making sure that the choices we're making are the smart ones to keep us alive longer. And that fear is just our brain kicking into survival mode, being like, Oh no, this might happen or no, Oh no, this might happen. But like once, you know, it's just like working a muscle, right? Once you've kind of worked it enough, you kind of know like, Oh, okay. I, I'm strong enough to overcome this, this, this challenge. Yeah. Cause I remember how freaked out you were to go. Oh yeah. Like the first time, oh, yeah. uh, even to Indonesia with Mike. Yeah. 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 Even the first time flying to Indonesia I had a panic attack and you know, then after that you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll go and I'll go. And yeah. now I have no problem flying to self by myself. You know, I fly all over the place Yeah. and, and there's a lot of people that won't do that, you know? And there's a lot of people that are afraid of doing things by themselves because of situations like that. But they're very, they're doable. You know, they're, they are very doable. Right. And, and I, and I, and the reason I, I think I'm, I'm telling these stories too is because like, I think I would be, I don't know where I'd be in life if I said no to the opportunity of traveling by myself. If like, if I was like, oh no, dude, I can't travel by myself. I need somebody to come with me. The, none of these doors would have been open for me. Well, yeah, because if you hadn't have taken that risk and started traveling, I mean, you, your whole you as a person yeah. really blossomed yeah. after you started traveling. Yeah. Yeah. After I started traveling mm-hmm. and you know, that, that sense of independence, mm-hmm. you know, you, you know, that, that sense of like, Oh yeah, I, I I'm I okay. Can do this. Yeah. I can do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't need somebody to be there with me because I can do it on myself. And that sense of independence and that sense of, um, confidence is really, really, really beneficial. Mm-hmm. And like, obviously like, you know, traveling is like I said, very, it's a very extreme thing to start doing. I have plenty of examples of things to do by yourself towards the end of it, but right. it's just, it's nice to see that, you know, those options were given to me and I, and I flourished in being independent, Good. you know, and, and it really made me grow as a person. Um, so hang on. I said, I wrote down, this is talking point. It says afraid of, Oh yeah. Yeah. Again, just talking about like that fear of, how people perceive you kind of thing. Again, feeling, feeling like you're lonely or feeling like you're alone just because you're by yourself. And, and oftentimes I feel like people are so quick to judge. And I think a lot of people are afraid of how they're going to be judged if they're by themselves. Um, but really honestly, the case is, you know, I just don't think people care enough to give you as much credit as you think that they're, that I don't think people are thinking about you as much as you think they are. Well, I think again, it, it all goes back to that inner voice too. Yeah. You know, what is your inner voice telling you? Is your inner voice telling you you can do it? Or is your inner voice telling you like people are going to think you're weird? Yeah. But mm-hmm. that's the thing though, is like people, I, I heard this quote one time. It says, you're going to, Oh God. Um, people don't think about you as much as you think they do. Oh, and, yeah. and it's the truth, you know, mm-hmm. like I, I, I think I, I'm misquoting the quote um, terribly, but really, honestly, people will just, they glance over you. They're so wrapped up in their own narrative that if you're doing something by yourself, they're probably not going to give you more than just a couple of seconds of thought. Yeah. You know, in, in, in along those lines, like mm-hmm. when I covered up my tattoos with mm-hmm. my makeup yeah. and I went into CVS, I was like, yeah, everybody's staring at me. Yeah. You know, nobody even, nobody even, I guarantee even remembered me being there. Exactly. But in my mind, everybody was like stopping and being like, Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, like you say, it's that inner narrative that, mm-hmm. that, makes you feel like that sense of abandonment or you're that sense of loneliness. Well, I think also too, like, okay, for me, like a lot of times, like for Mm. a woman, it's like, if you, I I mean, maybe I'm just broad. This is like too broad, but like doing things on your own, like for the lady at the grapevine, you know what a lot, maybe a lot of people would perceive it as like, Oh, how sad she can't find a friend or how sad she, she can't find a boyfriend Mm. or a partner, you know? And, and that's just not necessarily the case. Yeah. It could be completely yeah, different. You know, yeah. like she, they could just be like, Oh yeah, I'm here for work and I have a day to kill kind yeah. of thing. And I, and I think we build up that narrative of what we think people are thinking about us more than like what people are actually thinking about us. Well, sometimes it's easier not to do it than to overcome your fears and do it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's just a reason to say no. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, it's again, it's a survival tactic. Like, Oh, I'm not going to subject myself to this imaginary ridicule. So I'm just, I just won't do it and yeah. I'll play it safe. And so like, you know, once you kind of push yourself outside of that boundary of, um, that the restraints of what you think people are thinking about you, I think you, it's very liberating. Right. Because if you do that and you're like, oh, well I did that and I'm perfectly fine. Then you can start pushing the envelope and you start gaining more confidence and more independence. Because I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm kind of like thinking about my own life while you're yeah. talking about this. And you know, truthfully, I think I do a fair amount of things on my own. Yeah. We're starting to do a lot more. Yeah. yeah. You know, all my filming, everything I do, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, no, I mean the only time that we ever really do anything together is like, 
go up to San Francisco yeah. and walk the dog. Yeah, or like when we yeah when we both decide to do something together. But yeah. if you're like like for example, you're like, oh, I'm gonna film tomorrow. Did you want to come? I was like, no, you know, I got my own thing. I got something planned. You're like, it's good. No worries. Yeah. You know, and like, it's not like you're like, oh, well, I can't film now because Robert <laughs> yeah. wasn't there. Yeah. It was more of like, hey, I would love your company, but your company is not required for me to have this activity. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It was just kind of like my nice way of being like, hey, if you feel like getting out of the house yeah. and want to hang out, you exactly. know, you're yeah. welcome. But you're like, you're, but you're not like, oh, well, I can't go tomorrow then. And there's that difference between being alone and being lonely. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think in the past I would have been like, oh, oh yeah, but you 100%. Oh, okay. you, you, I, there's been times when you're like, well, I'd like to do that. Do you want to do it? And I said, no. And you're like, oh, it's okay. I don't want to do it either. Yeah. There, there's time. I can guarantee you there's been times where you've been like, mm, I'm not going to do it if I, if I don't have somebody to come with me. Right. So yeah. And, and so, and then that in itself is a milestone to show that how much, how far you've come for your like self-development, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And you know what? And truthfully, I mean, I know I could travel by myself. Yeah. I've done it before. You've done it before. Yeah. My, my bag broke in the middle of the San Francisco mm-hmm. airport, but I gathered and up. You were all fine. My, and, yeah. and it's one of the stories you love telling the most. Yeah, I was going to say, I <laughs> gathered know? up all my stuff and got through the yeah. TSA check line and you know what? I was all good. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. You know? It's, it's not the end of the world and it's, it, and it's, it's really liberating because you know, like I said, it just kind of makes you say like, oh, I can do this. I can do anything kind of thing. Yeah. So I was uh, really quick. I was actually thinking about reaching out to Kimmy and see if she wanted to do another San Francisco weekend I think th- trip. Yeah. I think you both would like that. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's been not? a while yeah. and you know, it's, it would be a nice kind of escape. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be fun. Cool. So I, um, following the article, it does say five benefits of doing things for yourself. So cool. they give you five examples. Okay. The first one was just, is it sparks creativity. And it absolutely resonated with me because whenever I'm like stuck mentally, whether it be like with life or, you know, an idea that I have that I can't flourish, I go for a hike by myself. And as I'm hiking, you know, I start thinking to myself and the wheels start turning. And I, I, by the time I'm done with the hike, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. I came mm-hmm. up with so many ideas. I find myself to be much more motivated. I find myself to, to find these out of the box ideas I wouldn't have done if I had just stayed home. Um, so it really does spark creativity because it kind of keeps you, your, your mind's already running. And so it just feels like it's on overtime. So some of my most creative ideas have been when we're like, we've been doing yoga or hiking or, you know, reading or anything, anything by myself mm-hmm. where I, I have that time of self-reflection. It really does help me out a lot in terms of creativity. Cool. Yeah. So that was one. The other one that says increase mental strength. And then it says page flip. And it says, being alone can be crucial for building mental strength. While it's essential to develop strong social connections, embracing moments of solitude has its benefits. Studies show that those who enjoy spending time alone are happier, excuse me, are happier and, um, I was also trying to thought, um, spending time alone are happier and report higher levels of, of life satisf- satisfaction. Typically, they have lower stress and are less likely to suffer depression. And I thought that was a very, I thought it was good, but I thought it was like very vague. Mm-hmm. Um, so that toward the end, I, I totally get it. But it, it, this isn't like, oh, if you want to suffer from less depression or less stress, do things by yourself. It just, it is just a, it just adds on to that side, side of um, independence. Yeah, because in that, go ahead. No, you can go for it. No, I was going to say, because that's going to kind of lead into my subject from next week, but I'll tell you okay. about that later. Yeah. So I thought that was, I thought it was really cool. Is it, it, it's kind of, it just kind of makes you mentally strong, you know, where you're like, I don't need no, I don't need anybody else because I'm strong on my own. Right. You know, I, I can, I'd love to have you, but I don't need you. Well, I think it's just one less negative thought that you're yeah. telling yourself. Yeah. Not only that too, but like sometimes I know like when, when I know when people are like planning trips, they'll compromise. And they won't do something that they want to do because the other person didn't want to do that with them. So Yeah, but that's just kind of like if you're going on a trip with somebody. I mean, yeah. it, it is kind of a give and a take. Yeah. But I mean, it goes back to like you said when you were in Africa, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you you have to make every decision for your, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you would have a different experience. Yeah, but like, you know, like it would, I would just say like, you know, it just makes you like mentally strong and... It's, it's cool. Yeah. I really, I really dig that one. Yeah. Uh, this one, it says gain a new perspective and it says spending time with friends and laughing is great, but regular moments of being alone can help you grow and gain a new perspective. Research suggests that it can change. It can be challenging to develop a different perspective when you're around people all the time. One study explored how spending time alone could even help you create more empathy towards others. If you can remove yourself from the social bubble just temporarily, you can step into a new headspace and switch up your perspective. And so like, I, yeah, and I totally get that one, the whole empathy thing, because like when you're in a group, it's us versus them, right? It's my group. And then you kind of like, you kind of like 
peer out and you kind of like start judging other people because you feel safe because you're in numbers. Whereas like if you're alone by yourself, you, you have a little more empathy for, for other solo people. You see what I mean? Yeah. So like if you were like at a, let's just say you're at like a concert, right? And you were, there was like eight of you and you're all dancing, but there was one guy or one or two people kind of like by themselves. You kind of just be like, huh? And then keep doing your own thing. Whereas like if you were by yourself too, you would, you'd be like, oh yeah, these guys are jamming out and just kind of pose, throws a little bit new perspective. So it's kind of like the whole, um, like mob mentality. Yeah. The whole us versus them kind of Mm -hmm. thing. Whereas like if you're solo, you're a lot more open, I think for initiating conversation or initiating friendships because you don't have like that safety net of your friends. You, you're a little bit more inclined to like, you know, reach out and contact with somebody or um, reach out and like make new social um, friendships. Yeah. You know? So cool. I thought that was cool. Yeah. And then uh, number four is, is learn to be okay with being alone. And it says the more you do things by yourself, the more you can learn to be okay with being alone. This means that when you are alone at times in your life, you should be able to cope with it, uh, cope with it more effectively. Although it sounds difficult, being alone gives you time to see all those things that you may miss when your focus is external, uh, when your focus is external to yourself. So like, like, again, you kind of just put yourself like on autopilot when you're like with other people. Mm -hmm. Whereas like when you're by yourself, you're like, wow, okay. Well, it gives you an opportunity, I think, to actually kind of get in tune with yourself. Yeah. And like, Mm -hmm. not only that, but again, because you're by yourself, your, your brain is a lot more active. Yeah. You're not on autopilot because, you know, like, let's just say John, you know, set everything up like, oh, this is, you know, John planned everything. I'm just going to go with the flow. You're just going to go on autopilot. Whereas like, you know, if you're by yourself, if you're doing anything, you're a lot more, Mm -hmm. a lot more in the, in the mindset. And then number five is get to know yourself. It says in solitude, you may learn more about yourself that you may, that may surprise you develop your inner voice and empower yourself to feel more comfortable in your own skin. You're in charge of your inner thoughts and really knowing who you are can give you a much more stronger feeling of self-confidence. Self-esteem and evaluation are critical to mental well-being and influences aspirations of social interactions and goals which I thought was really cool. And it really is the case because, you know, I love being by myself. Right. And I, you know, I definitely feel very, very happy with doing anything, you know, by myself kind of thing. And well, then cool. so finally it says things to do by yourself. And here's some examples. So like traveling again is like the crazy by yourself extreme section, mm-hmm. but you can also go to like your favorite restaurant. I mean, I love eating by myself. Yeah. Um, you know, I generally don't have to wait for a table because there's only one. So I can eat like at the bar. I can eat, you know, at a table of two. I'm perfectly fine by myself. Uh, you can go to a museum. Um, because this way you can kind of just like self-express and kind of go at your own pace. You don't have to worry about anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are all things too, that like, it's not, it's not unheard of for solo people to go. Right. Yeah. So like going to a restaurant by yourself, you're like, Oh, the guy's just probably hungry. He needs to eat or go to a museum. Guy's probably just a, you know, an art buff. Uh, this one says learn a new instrument or language. Again, those are very solo, um, activities. hobbies, yeah, mm-hmm. activities, right? So you can do that by yourself. This one was really cool. It said people watch which is really rad. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. Um, you know, you can just go into like the park and just watching and this way, you know, again, you can like meditate, you can kind of just zone out and, and be there by yourself. Uh, this one says wake up early and watch the sunrise, which I thought was really cool. Uh, spa day, which sounds really fun. You can work out by yourself, obviously traveling, uh, reading a book. And then it also says taking a class. Oh, very cool. Um, so I thought those were really cool examples of like how to start doing more things by yourself. You know, because yeah. like reading is not a team sport. Um, you know, spa days are usually a lot more relaxing. There's usually not a lot of talking. Museums, not a lot of talking. So I just thought they were cool little options. Yeah. 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 Now, do you have any advice for somebody who would like to? I mean, you don't have to be like, I'm quoting this or that. Yeah. But I mean, from your own experience, do you have any advice for somebody who would like to start that, but they're like stopping themselves? Yeah. I just think, I like, honestly, I just think that the best way to start is just to, you know, just, just to do it. I mean, do it, go, obviously go, don't go, don't go crazy and don't book a solo trip to like Morocco, mm-hmm. you know, be, be safe about these things, but really just start small and you'll, you'll find yourself like, you know, it'll definitely be a little weird at first. You're definitely gonna feel like people are judging you, but it's not the case. You know, right. p- people just don't care enough. And, you know, you'll really, really find out soon that like, oh, I can do this, you know, and then this leads to that and then that, and then it just opens up a whole slew of doors. But I mean, the best advice is just to, just to jump in, you know, it's just to do it. I mean, plan something small, plan something you're familiar with. You, maybe you're familiar with like the area or, you know, the restaurant or a coffee shop, but just go there and, and, and see and feel it out, you know, because I spent a lot of my life alone. I'm, I feel, I feel very comfortable doing this. And I understand that there are people who may not be as comfortable doing anything by themselves. Um, so yeah, just, 
just send it, I yeah. guess. You know, I, I, maybe I'm not like the greatest coach, but I'm like, yeah, just do it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's, that's what I have. Well, good. Yeah. That was really good, Robert. Yeah, I liked it. You I know, did. hopefully it encourages people to, to start, um, to start getting out there and just exploring a little bit more on your own. Yeah. Cause I like, I mean, I like doing things by myself and I obviously, I like doing things with, with you and you know, the, with the group, but it's not, my happiness isn't dependent on other people. I well, guess I is think the big that, takeaway. I mean, I personally think that if you had, if you have the, um, the, the option to do something on yeah. your own, but you choose to do something with a group, I think you would even go into that with a different perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Because you would be more of like, hey, I'm just going to hang out with you because I enjoy your company. Yeah. Instead of like, hey, I'm going to hang out with you because I need you. Yeah. Or like, you know, like you like you say, you're with a group and mm-hmm. you enjoy doing something. They're like, hey, we're going to we're gonna go this way. You're like, okay, I'll meet up with you later. Yeah. You know, like you're not, like you said, I, and I, think I, I guess maybe the big takeaway is being alone versus being lonely. Exactly. And being alone is far greater and it, it, it is very liberating. Yeah, I really, I liked that example of like you can be in a crowd and be lonely because uh-huh. I mean it is 100% such a huge huge statement yeah you know and then there's a lot of relationships that I think a lot of people are in that, where they feel lonely oh yeah but they're not alone because they're in a relationship and they're like well this is as good as it this is this is good and that in itself is almost like a pain that you can't under that you yeah. can't describe yeah because if you were to be like you know you let's just say you're you're married and you tell your friend you'd be like hey you know what i'm really lonely they'd yeah. be like what are you talking about you're married Psh. yeah you know and they kind of blow you off and then you're like well i really am yeah. you know yeah so yeah it definitely resonates a little bit because you know, it's weird because like i started off talking about like traveling and whenever i was writing these examples i was thinking of traveling but mm-hmm. the more i was writing about it the more I was thinking about like being in relationships, being with somebody who makes you feel alone mm-hmm. or it makes you feel lonely. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I think if you're in a relationship, again, if you're comfortable with yourself, mm-hmm. if you're in a relationship, you're in a relationship because you want to be, yeah. not because you need to be. Exactly. And it just, it takes it from that need to a want. Yeah. And that is really super important in a lot of different aspects in life. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you on that. You know, yeah. I, I, needing to do something. I mean, we need to breathe. We need to eat. We need to sleep. Yeah. But other than that, it should be a want. Well, yeah. Well, like, you know, like you're like, well, I can go, I can go to a restaurant, but, uh, but I want you to go with me is a lot different than like, Hey, can you go to a restaurant with me? Yeah. Because otherwise I can't, otherwise I can't go. I've been to the movies by myself. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've never done that. Yeah. I, I still remember the movies I've seen. Really? Yeah. I saw me, myself and Irene. Really? By yourself? By myself. Really? Laughed so hard yeah um i saw the magnificent seven okay by myself the one with chris pratt yeah and then i saw the twilight movie by myself really yeah that's super cool mom yeah i know that see i've never been to a movie theater by myself yeah i know luke's gone by himself but i've never done it yeah and you know it and it's really kind of in each time i went for for a reason. And I went to prove to myself that I could do things by myself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's, it, to me, it was a lot of fun. I haven't been to a movie in ever, but you know, I've changed, I've changed that out to do other things by myself. Yeah. See, I really like eating by myself. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I just, I don't eat by myself very often in restaurants, but I don't go to restaurants very often yeah, anymore either. Yeah, leave the house. You know, more. the whole pandemic thing. The thing is, is like with the whole pandemic, I think it just kind of um, like it, it made us almost even more isolated than we Absolutely. were before. Yeah. I, it's weird how starved people are sometimes of human interaction because of the pandemic. But yeah. 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 Well, I think you did a really good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, So what are you doing for yours next week? So for my next week, I'm doing something a little bit different than I did the week before, but I want to start to work on um, like building confidence. Okay. And I want to start with something really super simple with like just even following your own style, your own fashion, your own aesthetic. Yeah will besides following your heart and looking good, you're going to build your confidence. Yeah. There's a certain amount. If you, if you like how you look, you are a more confident person. Totally. The more of a confident person you are, the mm. more you can do things on your own. Yeah. So like I'm, I'm going to look into like, kind of like just ways, simple, super simple ways yeah. that you can, um, just follow your own, your own heart and build confidence at the same time. I like it. 
Well, that should be fun. It's gonna like a, it's like a perfect segue. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Like when you were talking about that, because a lot of it is like, you know, to me, it's like, and it's funny because you're, and this is, it, I think, really cool. But you're like, yeah, just plug your nose and jump in. Yeah. Where I'm like, well, get a pair of crazy socks, yeah. and then you know, you, yeah. you you work up to a pair of pants, yeah. and so it will be kind of cool to see how we have different ways of building yeah. our confidence. Yeah, I like that. It's nice too to see two different perspectives. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it be like, oh, well, this is my perspective perspective and this is the only like take on it it's it you know us having different points of views is very beneficial for you know really solidifying the point yeah because i can see how your way i i see because i build my confidence in both ways yeah some things i kind of inch my way in and some things i plug my nose and jump in so there is no right or wrong way it's just basically finding the comfortable way for you for whatever situation you're trying to grow your confidence absolutely absolutely well awesome yeah that's super cool Thank you. Yeah. Well, do you well, want to tell them where to find us? I do. They can find you as Sherbert on TikTok, yep. Twitch, yep. and YouTube. Yep. Robert Robert Pike Pike on Instagram. And you can find me as Gray Hair and Tattoo across all channels. And then you have my small little emotional baggage yeah. where you hang out with me and you explore the beautiful things that I see. Yeah, I like it. All right. Cool. All right, everybody. Thanks. And thank you. And we will see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.